Welcome. In this module, we'll take a look at the eight-step methodology, uh, which is a methodology which my consulting security consulting company has developed. Uh, it's unique, and uh, we've done this with a lot of experience, and we've, we've implemented this in a lot of places. So this is what we have developed. It really works. It's an excellent model, and it is used for security hardening. So uh, the question we will address in this module is, what is the eight-step security hardening methodology? Now, this is a diagram for the methodology, and let's just walk through each of the eight steps. At step number one, identify critical assets and the asset owner. Step two, research on the applicable security controls. Step three, checklist of the applicable controls is developed. Step number four, document the controls into a standard operating procedure, or SOP. Five, implement the controls on the test setup. Six, validation and checking of the control implementation. Seven, change management process for production environment. Eight, implement on production environment and monitor. So what is the purpose here? Many assets need to be hardened all across the organization at various times by various teams um, for various projects and requirements. Now, the purpose is of the eight-step methodology is that whenever we need to do hardening, we should always, always, always go through the same process and standardize and follow a consistent approach. The benefits are that there's a process for security hardening which is established and ingrained um, into the security team, and they always have to go through each of the steps, and they should never miss a step. And this establishes discipline to always follow the same steps. It helps avoid missing any steps in the process, and it gives the team clarity on what to do and what sequence to follow. Um, and it becomes much easier uh, rather than going and, you know, starting a new process for each activity. If you skip this process, the eight-step process, you, uh, you will follow a new approach every time. Every resource or person or in the team has their own method, obviously, and, and it will lead to different results. Uh, dependence on the resource would be there rather than the process. Uh, it would complicate uh, the entire activity rather than simplify and then there would be divergence in security activities. Every time we would take more, you know, it would every 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 single time that we do security hardening, it would be by a different person who would go adopt a different approach. It would take different amount of time, and the complexity level would be different. And we would skip things in the middle. So this is a, a diagram showing that which entities are involved in the security hardening. There's Information Security Management Committee, as we have discussed in the Information Security Transformation Roadmap. They drive the program, they do the day-to-day -day decision making, and they include, the ISMC team includes all the three to four domain team leads. And then there's a head of the department. For example, it could be the network infrastructure or network operations head of department. And that head of department actually has a team lead who is in the ISMC. Now this team lead is member of the ISMC and reports to the head of the department. So we, what in the ISMC, what we do is we find a good, young, but active and knowledgeable team lead from the network's infrastructure or network operations, and that person lies in the ISMC. So that when we say team lead, that team lead is actually belonging to the ISMC and reports to the head of the department. And then you have the IT operations team. And again, IT operations team could be from the database team. It could be from the application team. It could be from the network operations. It could be from the system uh, operations also. And these teams will implement the security controls, and typically they will report to the team lead, and the team lead in turn reports to the head of the department. And then you have the information security team, which reports to the CISO, or the head of the information security, or the head of security, or alternately would be led by a consultant if there's not a very strong security team in place. So this is a, a table showing the steps and who actually performs the steps and who facilitates. Step number one, identify critical assets performed by ISMC, facilitated by head of the IT section or head of the department. And research applicable security controls, information security team does this, and ISMC kind of monitors and helps. Checklist of applicable security controls, again, information security team uh, develops this, and the team lead helps. Uh, number four, document the controls into SOP. The team lead gets this done, and the information security team is there to help. Number five, implement the controls on the test setup. The IT operations team does this. Um, they execute it, and the team lead helps them. Number six, validation. Information security team does it, and the IT operations team is there to work with them. Change management process is taken care of by the team lead, 
and the ISMC will help them. And the production and monitor um, environment changes are done by the IT operations team and helped by the team lead. So let's take a look at the steps in the next module and, and go into further detail. Thank you.